<laughs> Welcome back to another another episode of Connecting with Creatives. Today I have Lauren. Hello. Lauren here, Santiago. Yes, Santiago. Is that how you pronounce it? Okay, because you're yes. from your family is from uh Portugal, correct? Portugal, yes. Okay, yes. awesome. It's it's traditional. Portugal. It's traditional? No, it's not. It's not the most traditional. It's it's more of like a Spanish last name. I I never really went into like the roots of it, but it's definitely a Spanish last name. Okay. Uh, well, thank you for tapping in and connecting uh, for episode number two. Um, and the reason why I reached out to you because, you know, as you know, we're connected on LinkedIn and other social media platforms. I was really, I went down a, a deep dive, right? Like on your, uh, your, your job history and things of that nature. And I know one thing, you know, we connected before, and you said it. You said that you wanted to really emphasize how powerful uh, social media is. Let's can we talk about that, and and then we're going to talk about your professional journey. Yeah. So, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, social media. You know, the thing that I find the most interesting is that it's everywhere. It's you know, I think there's a generation that understands that everything is part of social media and and social media is part of everything. And then there's an older generation that's still trying to like understand that. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's interesting to see that you take social media and I, I was like, I feel like one of the first years, like that's what I was like, freshman year, Facebook came out and it was just college people, you know, and my college got it. And it was all about posting every single picture you have. Every picture you had and you took that night, no, you had no idea what you were doing. You were just pushing it out on the internet. And it was like this new wave of like what the internet was, you know, it was really connecting with people and, and sh- showing yourself off. And, you know, sometimes I like have these like Facebook memories and I'm like, did I really say that I was crying in bed all day, <laughs> like 10 years ago? You know, like it, it was such a like raw learning curve for people to understand like what they were putting on the internet I think before that it was like there was chat rooms and stuff like that but it, it it wasn't like attached to your identity you know Facebook I feel like was the one of the first places and MySpace I can't forget MySpace where like things that you did on the internet were attached to who you were becoming you know mm-hmm. and um and it created I think like a wave of like, what's your identity on the internet versus like in real life, you know, especially Facebook and MySpace, like you would change your background, you would get creative, you would have post different types of pictures of yourself. And it was like this like explosion of like, of, of, of different personas on the internet, you know? And then I think that it came into, I I would say just from like viewing it, then like after Instagram, I feel like Instagram took like a little while to like catch on, you know, like, I I don't know when they started, but I remember I had it in 2013. And it was like, you would just post a picture of like your dog. And that was it, you know, and it's like, Oh, this is my dog. And it just, it blew up into this space, as YouTube was rising, where like, people were figuring out how to show the world who they were. And literally the world, not just their town, not the gas station attendant that they go see, not their high school clique who were either mean to them or not mean to them. Like they had a chance to reinvent themselves in a way that like you didn't have to become famous for, you know? Oh, your video dropped and I can't see you. I'm sorry. Can you, can you see me now? Can you hear me? No. No. Yes. You can hear me now. No, but I can, check. I can hear you, but I can't see you. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're kind of uh, maybe uh, when it's rendering, uh, it'll um, beef up the quality and the audio. So uh, we'll we'll keep flowing and uh, we'll work around it. So uh, I can see and hear you though. Yeah. Okay, so I could keep going because I could hear you. Okay, that's cool. And you can interrupt at any point because I I blab. That's no, my I, I blab. So I that's blab. why we're here. Like, that's why we're here. Track. We're, we're but, running the same. So 
So, so from your earlier experiences um, with uh, social media, how did you, how were you able to leverage your, your knowledge and your experience in corporate America? And what have you done uh, in your past uh, jobs? Um, okay. So social media. Okay. So I went to school for like graphic design it, well, it took me like a really long time to graduate college because I switched my major like three times, right? I grew up in a household of immigrants who didn't really know how to cultivate creativity because they felt like the way to succeed in this life is to be in business. In America, you have to go business. You have to own a business or be in corporate America business. In business. Like, you know, it was just like mm-hmm. very business. So I went to Dean Hall University Business School and... I realized like, this is not for me. I can't even do math. How am I going to succeed? Like, I can't do it. The stress was unreal. It it wasn't for me. I was like, was like percentages. Now they want me to like, and I was like, I talked to my parents. I was like, listen, there's so many options out there, you know? And I wasn't ignorant to that. I just didn't understand like how I can make a job out of creating you know, or creativity, like that was never really like pitched to me. I wasn't shown that. Um, I took a PR, I switched my major to PR because I was like, oh, I, I could talk. Like, let's, let's do that route, you know, took a graphic design class from there. And I discovered Photoshop and I was like, this is it, you know, like, this is it. And then um, my best friend was working as an intern at Hot 97. This is back in 2009, 2008, nine, right? And she was like, do you need an internship? Do you want to, do you want to work with me? I was like, hot 97, are you kidding me? Like, this is like New York hot 97. I was like, yeah. So I would go every Friday and I would intern for DJ enough. And my nice. job was to blog. This is like the blog boom, right? 2010, mm-hmm. YouTube probably just popped blogging everybody and their mother had a blog it was like instagram just bigger you know everything was through a computer still you know and i started blogging and then we pitched this idea to dj enough like what if we did like an entertainment news show like me and and hala like we're just gonna do entertainment news for for dj that's enough.com and he's like okay uh you didn't Try know what it. To- Let me see how like it'll come out. And we did. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, okay, what are you gonna talk about? This is so cool. And we started back then, it was called Strawberry Blunt, the sorority of hip hop. This is literally what it was called. And it was me and Hella, and we did entertainment news for that's enough.com. And we put it on YouTube under our own YouTube account and then we uploaded the YouTube onto his web page and like so he wasn't like really like a na- the name on it like he didn't really want like people to think that he was talking shit like it was us talking shit that was just our platform mm-hmm. and I think that was the moment where I realized like wow like video like there's video like And even that, we were putting stuff on Facebook. Like, people wanted to watch a video. They wanted to watch you talk. Like, it wasn't just about watching television anymore. It was watching, like, these outlets on the computer, you know? And through that, we started our own, like, platform. And it was strawberryblonde.com. And it was, like, a hip-hop news entertainment website. And we leveraged Twitter to tweet out our articles and it was sort of like this beginning of like entering the entertainment zone like on our own using video um we had like a digital radio show and it was just like these group of girls we didn't know what the hell we were doing but we knew that we wanted to be and do something during that time i feel like we were just like too new and too young i ended up getting a job at vh1 on live tv the live morning show. And that's sort of like, I loved it. I loved it so much. And I wanted to learn more about production, right? I wanted to learn more about storytelling, how to actually do that. I didn't go to school for that, you know? And I felt like there was not much that 
at that time, like I wanted to teach myself, but I really wanted to be in, in the corporate world and like learn. Um, while I gained that experience, I just saw the wave, like I saw it before, like it's going to go digital. Everything will be digital. These TV shows will be digital. There will be so much more space, you know, as this all uh, social media grew, all it did was is the world grew. It gave everybody more space to live in it, you know, to be a content creator, to not have gone to school, but know how to use your iPhone now. Like, I think it's, it's a double-edged sword because there's producers out there that are 23 that are running amok and making $23 million a year, like having their own <laughs> YouTube channel. And then there's producers who have been in the industry for 10 years trying to like get their next job and figure it out. But at the same time, like we can both exist and make content because whatever I'm making, like somebody's going to watch this. It may take a while to build the audience, right? But there's always somebody out there that's going to watch something because that's now we're trained as consumers. Like we want the content. And so there's so many more content creators. So, and so what, what yeah, I feel like we saw that. I saw that really on. So what would you say to somebody in your... Uh, say that again? What would you say to somebody in your um, situation that has been producing for years, but yet, like, there's kids that's coming up, you know, using their phone, stealing your job. So how would you tell uh, someone, your counterpart, what should they be doing to stay relevant? So... The thing is, is I think that a younger generation sort of always knows more, you know, in a, in a weird way, like they're being fed the content, like they're consuming it so much faster than us. Right. And it's like this weird gap of like, my mom has no idea what the hell I do or what's going on, but like, I get it. I get what, what my generation's going through and what, what the younger generation is going through. Right? I think TikTok was something that like, the latest example, it's like such an explosion. Like TikTok is genius. It is so genius. And I think it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Like, I think the the room to create is just bigger. And it's all about like me. Like, I don't have TikTok to be a persona. I want to create content for like brands and for companies and, and stuff like that. So I don't think the the 20 year old who's has their their face on camera stealing my job I think that there's just something for me to learn because at the end of the day they're not going to be able to do that like forever and, and they have stuff from us to learn how to you know deal with corporations how to deal with other humans like that was a big thing during the pandemic everybody's a tiktok star but they can't have a conversation like this you know so there's like a there's a yin and a yang to to the whole balance of the industry and and that's something that I think like I remember being at work pre-pandemic tiktok was starting to really like oh you watched it on tiktok and then it almost became like embarrassing like that i was watching that you know our our age was watching tiktok it's just a bunch of kids dancing to music and then you saw this shift of like no tiktok is so much bigger than that and i think that's the, the most interesting thing like i think tiktok will compete google like, I don't go to Google to search shit anymore. Yeah. I go to TikTok. Be why? If why I do you go to TikTok? TikTok? Because it's quicker? It's quicker. It's easier. And there's so much more. And, like, I could get through it. I could find what I need to find quicker. And, like, I pay attention to my own habits on the phone. Like, we all get lost in the phone unless you're extremely strict on the hour that you have, right? Like we all get lost. So I've said, if I'm going to get lost in TikTok, at least I'm going to pay attention to how I'm getting lost and what I'm looking at and why I'm looking at it. So that way I'm at least gaining information. And then I'll literally go into my notes app and be like, I just spent two hours. Well, not two hours, but like watching like spiritual videos. Like why? Like, you know, so I'm like trying to even learn my own behavior because it's like, what's drawing me in about these things. And I think it's, it's all about connection, right? So if you're going through a bad breakup and you're on TikTok and you see one quote, one podcaster, one something, you'll get trapped and it'll help you. And if you're looking for like how to cut a zucchini, you'll get trapped and then you'll find recipes. And it's all about like getting more information and like connecting. And I think TikTok, 
you know, maybe they haven't like monetized as much because there's like significantly less ads that I at least see than like YouTube and stuff. Um, I just think like that's the one to like watch out for. And there's like so much space. I mean, they created, you know, Charlie and Dixie and, and a man, Addison Ray. Like, there are YouTubers that are huge, like Jeffrey Star, who has his own like makeup company, and these YouTubers. But the fact that like TikTok created like a different level of celebrity, like Addison Ray was in, had her own movie, and it's right. just it's it's interesting to just be an observer of all, all of it. Like, you know. I don't want to be a TikToker, but I love to watch them and I love to see like what they're doing and how, how they even recruit each other and how they help out each other. And it's more than just dancing. And it's, you know, you could get onto this whole like selling stuff on Amazon, but leveraging TikTok. It's all Absolutely. about like consumerism at the end of the day. It's, it's giving people something that they need or want. Now, I do want to Sorry. ask you though, I do want to ask you like, what are what is your next steps? Like what's next for Lauren? Um I'm in a discovery page zone of my life. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I feel like for so long I've been watching everything happen, whether it's like TikTok influencers, Instagram people, YouTube. I've been working at media companies. Um, I just hit 10 years. Um, in the industry, like 10 years, I started in 2012. And if I want to go back to like those days that like I was at Hot 97 and, and doing that stuff on our own, like that was 2010. So like maybe 12 years in this, I, I feel like I'm just trying to find my place right now. Like, where do I fit in? Like, is it, is it more content creation? I want to get back to like storytelling. I like, I like the quick hits and I consume the quick hits, you know, um, but I do want to get back into like real interviews. Like I love, I love what we did at iHeart and, and VH1 where it was like a lot of interview, um, content. I think that's why like podcasting is like amazing because it's like you actually like listen or you watch a little bit like more thought out content and like everywhere has its space like you check on instagram instagram is not just photos now now it's the news source you right. know it's replacing like what news is and then you know tiktok is like where you either search for something like you you scroll just to see what what's up what's popping or if i need to make chicken enchiladas i'm gonna go on tiktok and search it or or if i want to know how to wear uggs I'm going to go search that on TikTok and you be my, you could search for like rabbits doing crazy shit. And there's somebody out there creating something for that. And I right. think that's the craziest part about seeing these apps. And what I was saying before, there's always somebody that's going to watch whatever your crazy idea that you may think is like red boxes. And it might just be like a video of different red boxes moving around, but there's somebody that's going to watch it for right. whatever reason they're watching it, you know? Right. Now, I do want to um, ask you, though, I do want to hop in here before we, you know, I know I value your time and I know you probably have to go soon, but I do want to ask you, how how would somebody go about getting into your current role um, for a major company, the companies that you worked for in the past? Um, you know, I think that I do see that it's interesting during my, I'm interviewing other places and, and I think you have to know sort of what you're looking for. Right. I, I know I'm not exactly positive what I'm looking for in the future. I know that I want to grow. I would love to like manage people. Um, I, I did an interview with somebody at a, at a company like two weeks ago and the hiring manager was like, we want, we want a producer that produces viral moments. And I'm like, okay, maybe you don't get it because they're, that person doesn't exist. Like, you know, that's not like, like maybe you're just really old school, but like those viral moments, you don't just like say like, Hey, guess what? This is a viral moment and it just works. Right. You know, I think that, um, what I would say is, is if you're going to consume content, consume it to help you right now. If you want to be a content creator and you want to get into, um, producing for celebrities or artists 
um, cause that's what we did too. Like I covered a lot of like live events at, at, um, I heart, I created, uh, I produced like digital shows, stuff like that. I would say learn everything that you can learn. You know, I went for an interview once and they asked me if I knew after effects. I was like, yeah, I had no idea. Motion graphics. Like, no, I knew Photoshop and premiere motion graphics. No, I spent that entire, they hired me and I spent that entire week because I gave them like a week out learning, going on lynda.com. I don't think it's lynda.com anymore and learning after effects just to land that job. Like figure it out. Like you, the tw- there's so much everywhere on the internet, on TikTok, on, you could do anything you literally want to try and do. And, and, you know, you hear that all the time, you know, like, oh, it's just another person saying like, figure it out. But if I could learn After Effects in three days, like, you can look at these job requirements, see what, what would be best for you. Like, I think experience and personality go hand in hand in this industry. You know, you have to be personable, you have to be able to, especially I'll speak solely for like, working with um, high level talent, because I did that at VH1 and and iHeart. You know, not being scared. Everybody is the same. Like, I've gotten starstruck a few times, but we've been with who? A- oh, oh my gosh! Oh, it is okay. So it's interesting. Uh, we were at it was either Country Festival, iHeart Country Festival, or I'm pretty sure it was iHeart Country or Jingle Ball. And it was Florida Georgia Line, right? Yep. It, it's like a country duo. I like all types of music, like all types of music, right? But I don't, just because you're somebody, I'm not going to get like crazy about it. And it was Florida Georgia Line. And I had been, I've been producing like my last 10 years. Like I said, at this point, it was probably nine, eight years. But still, I've been on set with people. I've been, I've met a lot of different people, you know, Demi Lovato, Ariana, like you meet these people when you're working. You know, and you see, like, who's humble, who's not. The most surprising people will be humble, and the most surprising people will not. You know, and it was Florida Georgia Line. And I remember I started this intro. I was like, oh, something, something. We're going to do this, this, this. And I stuttered, like, while, because I was so excited to see them. Like, I was so excited. And I stuttered. And they weren't, like, the nicest I'll say, I don't care. Like they weren't the nicest. And I was like, okay, producer mode. Like they literally don't give a shit about you. Like just get the job done. And it was this moment where I was like, oh man, like I can't believe I got starstruck for a second, you know, but it happens. It happens to everybody. I feel like it's crazy to say that it would never happen to somebody. It's like, you'll see somebody that like you're a fan of, like, you know, and, and it takes you that moment to be like, okay, act cool, act cool. You know, that was like, I let it go. Like, I've, I've been starstruck with, like, Halsey. Like, I love her. Um, nothing weird happened, but I was, like, she she was there. And I was, like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. But then, like, you, you realize, like, you worked really hard to even be able to stand in this room. However you're standing, you know, whether you're the, the editor, the shooter, the, the artist manager. It's, like, we all worked really hard just to be, like, standing here right now, to be welcome. Like, we're dope, too. You know, like we're dope too. It's not just who we're interviewing. Like we're dope too. Like we, we made it too. Like there's ways to go, but yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, so if you had one last thing before I I let you go, I I made a post today and I asked the the audience, um, if you had to choose one thing to start your career over, would it be purpose or would it be passion? Which one would you choose? Ooh, shit. That's crazy. Oh, man. Purpose. What? Maybe I can only say this because I'm 10 years in. <laughs> Maybe this is like a retrospect. Purpose, because I feel like if, if you're here and you're doing your purpose, passion comes. Like, you're going to have passion, right? I have passion to, like, like paint little things and do arts and crafts, but that's not my purpose. So whatever my purpose is, and like, I truly don't know if like, I've 
figured that part out yet. And I feel like that's why I'm, I am answering that way. Like, I want to know what my purpose is. I've had passion this whole time, but I feel like I haven't found my exact purpose, you know? And, and if I get on a project, I'll be passionate about it. Like, I think it's important, but dude, if you're a human soul and you're on this earth and you're doing your purpose, passion is, is already there. It already exists. That is so awesome. <laughs> you are amazing. Uh, and if you guys are, yeah. you know, watching, uh, please hit the like button, comment below. Let Lauren know your thoughts and how how can people reach out to you and find you on social media or TikTok or LinkedIn? Um, my Instagram name is uh, at that lolly girl. <laughs> So okay. Instagram, TikTok, all my socials. It's it's been my nickname since I was little, Lolly. So nice. Well, thank you so much, Lauren. I look forward to staying thank connected. And until next time. All right. Thank peace. you so much. Bye. Absolutely.